Alrighty, fellas, you already know what time it is. It's time to watch my video, because that's why you're here. Plain and simple, we're going to be rating waifus based on their aesthetic, uh, their personality, if I can think of it, and all of that good stuff. So without further, th further ado, let's hop right in. I'm not too familiar with the lore, so I won't be able to rank these characters based on lore too well. Starting off, we have a Cadiz, and she's not bad looking. She's perfectly fine. I feel like she's the kind of girl that doesn't really, you know, do too much. She's just kind of there existing. If she's your wife, you wouldn't be too mad, but I don't think you would be too happy either. So for that reason, I gotta stick her in the uh, below average here. Next is Adin. Now, I like Adin on a personal level. I think she's cool as shit. Uh, she's, I don't know if she's a lolly or not, but I assume she's not. So, um, for that reason, I'm gonna stick her below average as well. She looks fine. She's not unlikable. Same with the Katie's. They're both not unlikable, but they're not enjoyable to be around. They, I need a little more pizzazz to my life. You know what I mean? I know, I know this is a little interesting because Unlike, unlike Akadis and Adin, I know this has like some like weird cat fox ears things or like a headband on top. It gives her a little more pizzazz. But in this scenario, I will 100% put Adin in below average because she's not something I would chase after. Like if I was set in the Epic Seven world and I came and saw Ainos and I was single and I'm trying to get my dick wet, I would not just walk up to her and start a conversation. I'd probably be like, oh, let's try to find someone else. Now, there's nothing wrong with Alexa, again, just like uh, Akadis, Adin, and Ainos here. So I'm gonna stick her in below average. There's really not much to go over. Um, I believe she is a knight for working with Queen Dien or whoever. Um, in the beginning of the story, I think you meet her. So yeah, I mean, nothing nothing too crazy here. All-rounder Wanda. Okay, so this one, I spent a little bit of time and I thought about where I should put her and ultimately, I want to put her in mid. And there's a couple reasons. One, she's an archer, right? So she could probably hunt food for you. And two, she kind of reminds me of Amber in a way from Genshin Impact. Uh, you know, she's got the goggles. The, the bow and arrow, and her fit is actually kind of similar. So I figure she's kind of like the adventurous type of person. So if you're into like adventures or just outdoorsy, more outdoorsy, exploring, all that good stuff, she won't disappoint you. But aesthetically, she's not, she's, she's not that like profound. So that's why I stuck her in mid. Now, Apocalypse Ravi, there is a couple of things that went down my head, okay? I'm like, okay, she's a demon. Okay, is that a turn on or a turn off? And when I, the more I thought about it, I'm like, that's actually kind of a good thing. Cause think about it. How many characters in this game have this kind of persona where they're evil and a demon, kind of like uh, Apocalypse Ravi? Not many. I mean, you got Archdemon Mercedes, you got normal Ravi, but she doesn't have that aesthetic to go with. You got Briar Witch Asaria, Arbiter Vildred, which is a husbando. But I think because she has her own sort of unique qualities to her, and she's not even that bad looking, like, I'm gonna stick her in above average. Are there people that are gonna say, wow, a a Apocalypse Ravi is fucking garbage, bruh. Like, she'd probably wanna kill you. That's true. But you have to understand, when you get to know a person, they're very uneasy as well. Like, they're, they're gonna keep their guard up because they don't trust you. Um, but over time, as you pursue a relationship, they'll start to let up a little bit and then slowly but surely, they'll be more comfortable around you. They might not kill you. Um, they might tease you a little bit, but that's about it. And I know some people, um, AKA masochists, might have a kink towards that. So that's the whole reason why I'm putting Apocalypse Ravi up here because all the people below her cannot fill up a certain niche that fits with kinks. Next we have, I believe this is Araminta. Now, Araminta is great. She's good. I, her as, aesthetically, she's very pleasing to look at. She's got fishnets. After I thought about it a, a little bit, she doesn't provide too much to the table, but I think her looks alone 
can carry her to waifu tier. She, she's bussin' and she's got fishnets, so if you're into fishnets, you'll like Araminta. And she's not, like, being harmful in any way, and I don't think you'd have to work super hard for her to get to like you. Archdemon Mercedes, same boat as Apocalypse Ravi, except she's a little more crazy, I feel like. So that's only for the hardcore BDSM uh, players out there. Okay, now we have Arya. Uh, Arya, I, obviously she's a new character from, or going to be a new character that's gonna release by the time this video is out, if not already released. Aesthetically, she looks she looks gorgeous. Likewise with Araminta, you gotta put her in the waifu tier. Now, Arowell kind of falls in the same boat as Alexa, Ainos, and Adin, where she doesn't provide too much. Like, sure, she's a knight, she could protect you. I mean, aesthetically, she's not, you know, it's, it's just not there. Like, she's almost there, but not quite. So that's why I gotta stick her in below average. Assassin Coley, I get it. Assassin Coley is hot, but comparing it to everyone else, that is going to be on this tier list. She falls off for sure. And um, the real problem with her is she doesn't really stand out. So for now, I have to stick her in mid. But can I see people liking her for who she is and how she looks? Yes. Does she provide a lot to the table? Not really. So I have to stick her in mid. Azalea. I fucking hate Azalea, okay? She sucks. She's garbage in the game. And I don't really like her aesthetic either. Her head is bigger than her damn hip. I don't know if that's normal or not, but uh, it's kind of concerning. That's why I'm putting her in the trash in all caps. I don't know anything about Guilty Gear, but I, what I do know is Biken is fucking badass. And because she's badass, I have to put her in above average because she'd be the kind of girl to want to protect you, I feel like. Yeah, she might be a little intimidating, but I, I once again, once once you get to know them a little better, I feel like she'd be a great companion to have. The only flaw I guess you could really fault her for is that she has one arm, so she might suck dick at protecting you. But Lion has to be waifu tier. Now hear me out. This might be cap, this might be overrated. But Lion has huge mommy energy. She sits on a chair and she has like fucking claws from her chair that she uses. And trust me, imagine all the shit you could do with them claws. That's all I'm gonna say. Doc Ock would be fucking happy to have a companion like Malayan. So that's why you gotta stick her in waifu tier. Also, she's not as crazy, I feel like, as Apocalypse Ravi or Archdemon Mercedes. So she gets a one-up from them. Now, Bologna is not as good as Seaside Bologna, but she still holds up pretty well. I think people underrate her because they're like, oh my god, Seaside Bologna, not as good. I mean, Bologna, not as good as Seaside Bologna. Fucking trash. But the thing is, it's kind of like two sides of the same coin. You have Bologna in a, in a swimsuit outfit and Bologna in like an elegant dress. So it really just depends on if you want to see more skin or less skin. But honestly, it holds up pretty well compared to the, uh, Seaside Bologna skin, and for that reason, I gotta put her in mid. If she had a little more utility, she might have gone to above average, but right now, she's in mid. Now, Bloodblade Karen is probably out to kill you. Um, she seems very crazy. Uh, you could even tell from her S3 animation if you've ever seen it. But again, same, same scenario as Archdemon and Apocalypse Ravi. You get to know them, they can probably do some good work for you. BDSM life. Pretty good for that too. Now, Briar Witch Asaria, I have to put one tier lower than Archdemon Mercedes and Apoc Ravi, and there's a couple reasons. One, I feel like Briar Witch Asaria does not stand up aesthetically compared to Archdemon Mercedes and Apocalypse Ravi. Archdemon Mercedes has good assets, you know, like big, you know what's, and Apocalypse Ravi doesn't have that, but she has a toned down desire as a uh, sadist. Briar Witch, I feel like, has the best, the worst of both Archdemon and Apocalypse Robbie, where she's not too aesthetically pleasing in my opinion, and she's she's probably very sadistic. Uh, just the cold, dead look in her eyes, you kind of get a bad feeling like, you know, she's probably messed up in the damn head. She might be depressed or something. And sometimes you just don't want to deal with that because, you know, you might be dealing with depression or, you know, problems yourself. 
and having them already in a bad state of mind makes them more unlikable, if you get what I'm saying. If you've ever been in a relationship, you'll, you'll understand that if you're depressed, finding someone to be with is not the right way to go. Now, I looked at Camilla, I peeped Camilla's uh, picture. She is decent. Um, she reminded me of Lucy Hartfilia from Fairy Tale, uh, except in a night outfit and a little more edgy. She's probably gonna be below average, or not below average, sorry. Uh, mid-tier. Couple of reasons. One, she doesn't look terrible. The only backside is that she seems very vanilla. Um, so I have to leave her in mid. Uh, Cecilia. Now, this one's a little weird to rank. Cecilia, I personally feel like doesn't have that sort of aesthetic, uh, that maybe some other characters have. Like, it definitely is not very pleasing to look at. IMO. Her personality and her role in the story holds up. It's good. Um, and for that, she gets a moral high ground boost to, I think, at least mid. Um, and that might be Cap. You might be like, oh, well, uh, I don't, I don't like her because of, uh, you know, I don't like women and knight armors and all, you know, she's got white hair. She just looks fucking whack. Need I remind you, she has a skin, uh, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Celeste. I gotta put her below average. She's not, there's nothing wrong with Celeste, but she provides nothing to the table. Celestial Mercedes. I'm gonna have to give that a solid mid-tier. She's got a lot going for her. She's a homunculus, right? And I believe in the story, she doesn't know too much about herself and like, you know, being able to act human. That is probably an obstacle for people that maybe want to be with her is that, you know, you kind of have to work on making her sound human and behaving like a human in order for her to really show her true colors. But starting off, it might be a nuisance and it, it might be a turnoff for people that uh, aren't willing to put in the effort for her. So that's why she's mid. Uh, she's got potential, but you know, people aren't, might not be willing to put in the effort, especially in 2022, people be lazy as shit. I am probably a little biased to Celine. I like Celine. I don't use Celine. I don't have a Celine, but I like Celine. I like her aesthetic. I think she's hot. I think she has slight mommy energy, which is fine. I'm not into mommies, but just having that makes her unique. She sounds like a dope person to be around. Even even if you're not even like trying to get your dick wet with her, just being friends with her seems pretty dope. Uh, so I got to put her in above average. Is she a little bit vanilla? Yes. Okay, but everything else about her makes up for it. Now, Cerise looks very serious. She doesn't seem like she wants to have fun. So I had to put her in below. No, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. I had to put her in mid. She's got a little bit going for her. Like she has white and blue hair. It's kind of unique. Uh, or I guess it's more highlights. She has highlights that are white highlights. If you're trying to look for something more, then she's definitely not. She doesn't fit the bill. She's kind of more for vanilla people that like vanilla, but with like the slightest hint of, of black pepper. Now this one might be cap, it might be a hot take, but I really think Sermia is only above average. I don't think she is waifu status, and here's why. One of the main issues with Sermia is that she's very vanilla. Think of her as like Urza, but like a less cool Urza from Fairy Tail. You know, fire sword, knights, um, all that good stuff. She has, I believe in the story, she has like a gambling problem. So you ha you'll have to deal with that if you're with her. The thing that boosts her up to above average, instead of putting her in, you know, mid, would be because of her personality, you know? Uh, she seems like an enjoyable person to hang out with, similar to Celine. And now Charlotte. I have to put her in trash for two reasons. One, she looks like a lolly but I have no clue, so I'm gonna put her in trash. And two, she has a big ass forehead. Like, what the hell is this? What is this forehead? I'm not about to fuck around with that. Um, also, she seems very bratty, very childish. Um, so even if she is of age, she's either in trash or lolly. I, I really don't know. But if she was of age, 
She's going in trash, so I'll leave her here for now. Please don't cancel me. Now, Christy, I have no clue if she's a lolly or not, but if I had to rate Christy, I would put her in mid. Now, it is a close competition between mid and below average. The reason I'm putting her in mid is because she has a little bit more flair to her aesthetic than the ones in below average. Uh, for example, uh, Alexa only has two swords and she's pretty vanilla. Celeste is literally just a blonde archer uh, dated back in like, I don't know, the 1600s or something. But Christy, she's got elf ears. And that could get you a long way. And I think she has horns too. You won't be too satisfied around her, but if you're into horns and elf ears, then you know, she's she's good for you. Clarissa, trash. Do I have to ask why? Clarissa is in trash mainly because of two things. One, she's super, super sadistic. If you've seen her animation, her Esther animation, she goes fucking ballistic and it's crazy. Yeah, she's just really scary. The only reason why she's not in all trash in all caps is because she doesn't look that bad. She's not, she's not aesthetically unpleasing to look at. But she's alright, she's alright. And the reason why she's not in like above average, similar to Archdemon and Mercedes and a Apocalypse Ravi is because it's it really is a lot. Like if you've seen our Arch not Ar sorry, not Archdemon, Apocalypse Ravi's S3, it doesn't look too bad. Archdemon, I actually haven't seen personally. Yeah, I mean she just looks better than Clarissa, I'm just gonna tell you that straight up. IMO. Coley is gonna be another trash for me. Coley is okay, but A. Coley is way better. I'm gonna just tell you that much. Coley has these weird eyes. Like, I don't know what happened, but there's no pupil. It's just blue and then a white circle in the middle. So she looks like an alien if you zoom up close. And I'm not trying to be around an, uh, 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 an alien, okay? Also, I find her visually unpleasing. So that's why she's in trash. Now, Conqueror Lilius. We already know. I think when Conqueror Lilius got released, she became the new dominatrix of the damn of the damn game. Like you have you have Belion and you're like, okay, yeah, she can be a she can be a dominatrix. But I think Conqueror Lilius takes the case. Just from her aesthetic. She's she's very good. Like holy cow. Like I would definitely go beta male for her, for sure, for sure. She'd probably be willing to protect you in some capacity. She could treat you like a servant. Um, some people are into that. She could treat you like a, you know, like something else. It'll be a whole nother experience. And, you know, she's badass. Kind of like Belion, she's badass. That's why she's got to be up here, in my opinion. ML Rin, this might surprise you, also on the waifu tier. A few reasons. ML Rin is aesthetically pleasing to look at. She can dance for you. She's got little cat ears. Well, not really cat. It's more like fox ears, but it's it's hair. It's fox. It's hair, but it's shaped like fox ears. It's it's confusing. You'll see you'll see it when you when you when you get her. Yeah, she, she can do. She can entertain you for a good while, and you know, give you a nice lap dance if you know what I mean. The only the her only downside that I can think of uh, is that she might not be a good partner, and the fact that you know. She's a little flaunty, so you might get, uh, you might lose trust in her over time, or she might not be able to do like, you know, house chores or something like that. But I mean, if you can get past that, she's pretty good. Also, one more thing, she could also work as a pole dancer and make the good money for you. So then you would be the one cooking and cleaning at home while she go works. Now, Destina is very vanilla. Her aesthetic is fine. She doesn't look elegant or anything. She's just kind of there. She looks like, you know, Mother Nature, but like a less cool version of Mother Nature. So I'm gonna have to put her in mid. Like she's nothing terrible and her aesthetic definitely carries her, but it's nothing crazy. Dien, okay. I like Dien. This might be a little cap, but Dien, above average. Here's why. She looks like the kind of woman to treat you as an actual significant other, if you will, compared to maybe some of these other people, like let's say Belion or Archdemon Mercedes or even Sermia for that matter. She'd be, be able to treat you nicely and you'd be able to treat her nicely. And it'll, you could make a very vanilla 
connection between each other. Now, you might be thinking, well, Deanne doesn't even look that nice. You gotta put her in mid, dog. Well, I say that's Cap. I think, I think, I feel like she has a little bit of mommy vibe. Just a smidge. Enough to be able to, be able to trust her more on first sight. Which is important because first impressions are basically everything in the world now. I think Deanne is like, kind of like the Mario of Nintendo. But in a less cool way. Dizzy, waifu, here's why. Dizzy provides things that all the other characters in Epic Seven, waifu-wise, do not provide. For example, Dizzy has wings. Dizzy has a skeleton companion, whether that be good or bad. Yeah, you know, she provides more to the table than you expect. She's visually appealing to look at. The only thing I can really fault her for is maybe her personality might annoy you a little bit, but if you can get past that, I think she'll be great. I like Doris. Um, I think she's cool. Do I think she's a good waifu? No. I'm gonna have to put her in below average, mostly because I, since she has this like cleric outfit, I feel like she's sort of religious. And if you aren't religious, then you don't fuck with her at all. Because how religion works is if you're, let's say you're like a uh, Christian or something, if you if your parents are like, I don't want you dating an, athe an, uh, an atheist uh, when you grow up, then your options are already limited. So if you put yourself in Doris' issues trying to find a guy, they gotta be religious, which nowadays I feel like is kind of hard to come by. I like Ida. I use her a lot in Epic Seven. She's mid. She has elf ears, sorta. And you know, she's she seems like a shy introvert. So if you're into introverted gals, she'd be the one for you. She seems kind of depressed by her voice lines uh, and what she says, very uncertain about things. So you're going to have to work that out with her as you pursue the relationship. So that's why I gotta put her in mid. Like she's good. She doesn't look too bad, but you gotta work on her a little bit. Now, I don't have too much to go off for Elena. Uh, all I have to say is, she doesn't look too bad, doesn't look too good. She has a harp, so she can probably play you a lullaby song. That's about it. Now, L felt is, I gotta say, this might be a little overrated, but, or underrated, depending on how you look at it. I gotta put her in above average. She has bunny ears and good aesthetic and two she's got big honkers and good aesthetic and that's two good things that people like big honkers and bunny ears so that's got to be above average the only thing that i have to complain about is maybe her personality might fall off and she seems to be sort of a the annoying type of girl so i have to put her in above average instead of waifu and also because i don't know too much about her i haven't watched re-zero i don't know anything about re-zero except for the characters and i can tell you from the looks only amelia is mid but because there's a lot of hype and debate over rem versus amelia um, who's better, I'd have to give her above average just going off of popular belief because I don't have the knowledge. And personally, I don't think she looks too bad, so I had to put her in above average at the very least. Fairy Tale Tenebria. Now, Fairy Tale Tenebria is kinky in a way. She, she seems very sassy and very bratty. Now, I know that is a kink out there, but I'm not into it. Uh, I don't know how many people are, but if it is your kink, uh, then go for you. But for most people, she'll probably be a turn off. But on the other side, on the bright side, she doesn't look too terrible. So I have to put her in mid. Faithless Lydica, with her skin, is good. Um, she could protect you because she's a knight. She, her, she doesn't look too bad. She has two outfits, so, you know, you get the best of both worlds there. Yeah, she just, you know, just basic bitch. This one might be the most cap you've ever seen. But I believe, I truly believe, Falconer Clurry, above average. Hear me out. Falconer Clurry has survival skills because she looks like she's from a tribe. And she has a pet falcon or whatever. Um, she can probably hunt for you. She can probably teach you how to live outdoors. You know, if you like going camping, I think she's a very good fit for you if you like the outdoors. So that's why I had to put her above average. And she's not even that bad looking. She's actually quite, you know. I have to put Fallen Cecilia at a hard mid. 
And reason being is because, you know, she has a skin, it's not bad. Um, her aesthetic alone is not bad. The only thing that's keeping her not from below average is her uh, dragon tail. You know, people might be into that. Another thing is uh, that it's more of a con actually, now that I think about it, but she seems a little, a little edgy. Especially when you hear her voice lines, it's kind of monotone in a way. Not that it's a terrible thing, like to be a little bit edgy, but some people might find that as a turn off. So that's why she's a mid. I don't know too much about Fighter Maya. I seen her picture. She's got holes in her leggings and her, uh, I guess they're not really panties, but I guess underwear. I had to put her in above average because she does look nice to look at. She's, she is a nice character. She's got good assets. Her S3, she blasts people up to the sky and it's pretty badass. So, uh, I gotta leave her up here. Flan. Now I had to think about this for a little bit, but after thinking about it, realistically, if you were set in the Epic Seven world, right? And if you saw Flan, I think I'd probably want to, you know what? I have to put her up here and she knows a lot about technology. So if you're ever behind on technology, then you can just hit up Flan and she's got you, bruh. And she seems like she's a fun person to hang out around with. Not like some of the other characters that we'll get to. Free Spirit Tyria. Now this one, is interesting because it might have a little bit of bias towards free spiriteria and i'm pretty sure most people do um mainly because you know it's the, one of the first characters that you get and then after using her for so long you're like oh this character is fucking annoying to use she sucks she's trash she's garbage she's whack whatever i feel ya so in that regard i saw her appearance or as her aesthetic it's perfectly normal i think she belongs in mid there's nothing wrong about her. There's nothing cool about her. She's just normal, normal basic bitch. You might be thinking, well, why don't you put her in below average? Well, here's the thing. Her aesthetic is, I want to say, slightly better than all the ones that I will put in below average. So that's why she's in mid. Hear me out on the Godmother. Now this one might surprise you. Well, maybe not. <laughs> but the Godmother isn't trash. I'm gonna actually say below average. Below average because she has a lot of like, like armor and tech that she wears, which means that she's probably knowledgeable or the art of, you know, iron works or technology. So she could probably teach you a thing or two about that and, you know, probably protect you pretty well, kind of like Iron Man. So I, I gotta put her in at least below average. Great Chief Koana. Easiest above average of my life. Great Chief Kwana, just the name. Um, she's a chief, or I guess chief dis in this case. Um, she probably knows how to rule over a tribe. And that shows her competence as a leader is good. And she knows what the fuck she's doing. And you can probably trust her in a relationship to be able to take care of what needs to be done. So if, for example, maybe like cooking or hunting, all that good stuff. And if you're into the outdoors, um, she's a good fit too. Now I checked out Hazel because I didn't know who she was. Hazel with an S by the way. Boring as shit. Boring. Literally every other katana girl I've seen in an anime. Below average. The only reason why she's not lower is because there's nothing that I hate about her. I just hate the fact that she is who she is. Uh, if that makes any sense. Hazel with a Z. Yeah, Hazel with a Z. I feel like she is way too nerdy looking right now. If I hang around her, I feel like I will get bullied in school. Is that a bad thing? Yes. Um, she doesn't even look that hot. She's not aesthetically pleasing. There is only one upside to her that I could think of, and that is if you are in school and you are friends with her, she could probably help you out in a group project or your homework and you would be done. Would this be a person I'd be willing to hang around with? No. This is just a friend with school benefits. H. Yafin. I mean, come on. This, this should be obvious. Waifu, why? She's just hot. I mean, she's just hot. She's got like, she's got horns as you can tell. She's got big honkers. I mean, everyone likes big honkers, I assume. Uh, as long as they're not too wild. And she also seems like a fun person too, um, to hang around with, that is. And I think that is important for a, rela a relationship. Now, I don't know too much about Hua Young. I have to stick her in above average, mainly because she seems like she works out and she's buff, all that good stuff. That's good, 
she doesn't look terrible, and I think fitness is pretty important for just anyone in general. And the fact that, you know, she's a martial artist, she might be able to teach you karate as well to protect yourself. So she has a, she has good upside, really no downsides now that I think about it. Like for example, everyone in mid has a little bit of downside. Um, like Celestial Mercedes here, you know, she doesn't really talk too much, you know. Cecilia, her aesthetic is like, eh. Ilinav is interesting, mainly because I think people might get intimidated by her because of how she looks. But I personally think she's above average. Um, comparing everyone else again to mid, I think she beats everyone at mid. Couple things, uh, she's a knight, she can protect you. She seems like she goes pretty much all out whenever she fights. So if you hear her voice lines, you know, you can tell she's trying her damn hardest out there and not half-assing it. There's nothing to hate about her except maybe she's intimidating, but that's literally nothing. You just get used to it. Now, I am not a huge fan of Asaria. I think she is garbage. Um, but how garbage? Not that garbage. I think she's mid. Very mid. She seems very uptight and she wants everything to go her way, I feel like. She seems like not the fun person to hang around with. Um, in fact, she'd probably be one of those people that you avoid in school if you ever met her and known her. But she would probably get the job done if you were stuck in a group project with her. Uh, she would probably do a lot of the work because she wants to do the work her way and not have others contribute. So that's why she's mid. I know nothing about Jacko. She's new. Um, all I know is that she's got like a weird doll thing and her moves, her skill set, to, it makes her look like a dancer of some sort, like a disco dancer. So got to put her in above average. Like she's not even that bad and she seems like she's a fun person to hang around with. Jenna literally has nothing going on with her. There's really nothing I could really say. Like I can't even tell what she's into. I couldn't even tell you what her favorite color is. Well, maybe I can. It's probably blue. There, I have nothing to go off of for Jenna except on, based on how she looks which is pretty boring. People might think Judge Kisei is above average. I think she's a waifu status. You know, she is like the original mommy of the, the game. Um, has she fallen off as a mom? Yes. But does she still hold up to being a, a good waifu? I think yes, a thousand percent she does. She definitely isn't like the top of the top, like she's not beating Belayan or anything. But, you know, she holds up, she still holds up. I'm not gonna put her in above average just because there's more waifus that are pretty much better now. It's only a few that fill up her niche. It's nothing crazy. Judith, don't even make me laugh. Below average. Same same boat as Gina, nothing going on with her. Bond model Kana, this one might surprise you, it might not. Bond model Kana, I think is a waifu. She's got the personality. She seems like she has a lot of fun. She's unique. She's got a Christmas outfit and a normal outfit. So that's two sides of the same coin there. And um, yeah, I mean, she's nothing like Holiday Yafin. Like if this was ordered, which I might order later, Holiday Yafin would probably be like up here and then Bond model Kana would be somewhere near the bottom. Karen is interesting, right? I know there's a lot of people that like Karen. I actually like Karen. If I had to guess, where to put her, I'd have to put her in mid. Mostly because she seems pretty vanilla. I just like her more aesthetically than some of the ones in below average. So I have to stick her there. Kawana has to be, well, it doesn't have to be, but I'm going to put in mid as well. She's no, she's no chief Kawana. She's just the normal Kawana. So she gets a little downgrade from above average to mid. And like, you know, same boat as Karen. She's she's all right, she, nothing crazy about her. She just has a different panache to what she does. So she's probably more outdoorsy. Meanwhile, Karen is probably more into like kendo fighting or something. Kyrus is an elf who is very, I don't know. I feel like she doesn't do anything at all except for be good in Abyss on um, some floors. Other than that, like, I don't really like her aesthetic. I don't, I don't know. Like the only thing she has going for her is her elf ears. That's what's keeping her from trash. Kazuna I, now this one's tough because I have no clue if she's a lolly or not. I know she's a VTuber. So for that reason, I had to put her in a waifu tier, mostly because people probably 
are jacking off to her day by day. And I hate to be that guy, but it's a crazy world out there. I would put her on a personal level, probably in lolly tier just to be safe, but for the purpose of the video, I'm just gonna put her in a waifu tier. Other than her being a VTuber, she really has nothing going on for her. Um, you know, she's not too ugly. Um, I don't hate her or anything. She might be annoying because, you know, um, she has lolly type vibes, but if you can get past that again, you should be okay. I had to put Clary in trash, and here's why. F Clary looks nice. Normal Clary does not. She looks like she, like, took, like, 10 doses of fucking morphine or something. Like, she looks dead. I don't know. I am probably biased towards Command Model Leica because I like Command Model Leica. Instead of putting her in Waifu, because I do like Command Model Leica, I'll put her in mid. Reason being is because she's a, she's good with technology. Uh, she can probably help you uh, with that if you ever need it. Um, especially in the Epic 7 world where, you know, you might need help with that, adapting to the world and everything. She's got like synthetic wings, which I think are pretty cool. The only drawback that I have is that I feel like she would probably talk very robotic and boring. Not really human-like, but just like no personality. Kind of like Celestial Mercedes. I have to give her the plus one here over Celestial Mercedes because Command Model Leica has that tech. This one might be very cap, but I really do think Landy is a top-notch, uh, above-average waifu. Landy has a fucking mech, okay? She has a mech that can shoot fucking missiles. Imagine riding in that thing. That would be cool as shit. And also, I think Landy is kind of hot, just just by herself alone without the mech. And she's probably like a captain or some sort because she's got like a captain outfit. So she has some authority. She has some power over the world. This one might surprise you. Lena, above average. Here's why. As I mentioned before with Hua Young, Lena is buff. You can tell she's super thick. I think that's great. There's nothing wrong aesthetically with Lena. She's not ugly, IMO. Uh, she's nothing I would spaz out over or spaz on. Having a girl that works out, I think is good. Cause again, fitness is good. You don't want a significant other who is a slob or lazy. Um, you want them to be, you know, active, doing things. Her being able to be buff shows me that, hey, I can probably trust her to do things maybe around the house if need be, or help me move furniture or uh, stuff like that. Lydica, I'd have to rate. I want to go below average. I don't think she holds up to Faithless Lydica. It's sad because she has a skin, I know, but I don't see Lydica and her appeal. I mean, she's pretty vanilla as well. Um, I hate to say it. She does get kind of an updoot where she is a knight, so she has like some loyalty moral high ground there but i'm not gonna put her above someone like adin who's a literal hero this one might be a little cap but i do think lilius is above average so you you, you remember how i mentioned how conquer lilius has that kind of dominatrix sort of vibe to her lilius has the same thing uh with a few drawbacks and uh dial backs as well so it's basically dialed back her dominatrix sort of appeal the only thing is that now she looks like she's a truce she, she's a little bit sadistic not nothing crazy but it has a hint of it a flavor of it and you might be able to see that in the story as well if you read it i mean there's nothing wrong with her other than that aesthetically she's fine i wouldn't be like all up on her grill sermia is got to be Waifu? She's basically just a better version of Sermia. IMO. She's more heroic. She's got more flair to her, more pizzazz. Her outfit is just out of the ballpark compared to Sermia. So I had to put her above, uh, one tier above, because she's just a lot better IMO than actual Sermia. And also, you know, she's a knight, so she could probably protect you and all that good stuff. Rowana. Now, for me, Rowana is a little weird, but I'm gonna have to put her in mid. Uh, she has good assets, but I feel like it's good assets, but they don't mesh together. Also, she has red eyes, which is a little scary. Um, and it, they make they, they make her eyes pop because her main aesthetic is like, I believe it's light green, but her eyes are like 
sheer red. So they make her eyes pop out. I don't know why. Is she supposed to be evil or something? And I don't know about it. Um, so I'm very confused there. But if you can get past that, I think everything else about her is magnificent. So mid is a valid spot for you. Luna. Okay. Do I even have to like talk about this one for real? Like I know I said it like three times, but Luna, waifu, she is literally the face of Epic 7. If you don't have Luna, then you're missing out. Everyone likes Luna. I mean, she has it all. She's got horns. She's hot. Big ol' honkers. Got a fucking dragon tail. The only thing I'd say she's missing is, uh, I don't know, some AoE capabilities. But um, all jokes aside, I do think she's probably the best waifu in the game. Doris, the magic school one. I think she's like right here next to Doris. I mean, she's just, she looks better, I'll give you that, compared to her specialty change. But her, her, her only reason why she's down here and not in mid is because she's religious, most likely. You know, making her look prettier isn't going to change that. So that's why I had to put her down there. Mascot Hazel. I have to put her in at least a mid. Sorry, not mid. Below average. My bad. <laughs> uh, she is better looking than Hazel, but I don't know if I would want to go out with someone like Hazel, who is probably a bookworm and talking about nerdy things. I don't think I vibe with that. Some people vibe with that. I don't. You could make the argument that she goes up to mid, but for me, here. I hate Maya. No, I'm just kidding. But. Maya's very vanilla, so I have to put her at av uh, below average. I don't know too much about Mercedes again, um, but I will stick her up with Celestial Mercedes because I feel like they're similar. Now, Mercedes is kind of a weird one. Uh, I like Mercedes. I don't see the appeal of Versa. Like, I don't think she's hot. I don't think she's anything crazy. I don't dislike Mercedes. I feel like her personality would be, you know, probably the same as, let's say, Hazel over here on the top right. So I got a sticker on below average. I don't I don't really have too much to go off of on this one. Aramentha's literally the same as uh or this is Silverblade, par pardon me. Silverblade, Aramentha is literally the same as Aramentha. Like they look very similar. You could make the argument that maybe Silverblade Aramentha is lower. Because no fishnets, I think. But I'm gonna stick her there for now. Now Mui. Now this one might get you kind of confused. Mui is, in my opinion, above average because of one thing, one thing only. She's got a whip. You know, you could do a lot of kinky shit with that. That's all I'm gonna say. Whips are pretty powerful. I like Opsig. Opsig is cool as shit. I'm gonna have to put Opsig in above average because she's cool as shit. She's wearing this nice formal uniform, so it shows that she's not anything too wild. Um, she she deals with like technology, sort of. I think her S3, like she controls planes or something. Would she be a fun person to hang around with? Probably not. She can probably get some work done for you and protect you pretty well. And I think that's gonna be important in the Epic 7 world. I gotta put Orts in mid. Orts provides something more than below average like she's got like cat ears whiskers she's got the whole like kitty catty aesthetic to her and she's got good assets personality wise i don't know what she's like so she could be higher for all i know but just going off of looks i have to put her in mid so oddly i'm going to have to place probably in below average i have a bias for oddly but the fact that she's a homunculi i believe and the fact that she has nothing really going on for her makes her kind of a turnoff for probably most people. So I had to stick her in below average because, you know, nothing too crazy, nothing too special, but not hateable. I think Pyra is one of the hottest characters in the game, except for the fact that she looks so fucking pale for I don't know why. I don't, I, I really don't. She's so like desaturated, it feels weird. Um, I don't know if she's like supposed to be like a fox vampire or like if it's part of her lore or what, but it's kind of a turn off for me. That doesn't mean she's not ugly. Um, she's just missing some melatonin, I feel like. If you can get by that, she'd probably be a waifu. But for me, I kind of had to rate Pyra down here and above average. She does provide utility, or not utility, but you know, I guess utility, I should say, with the the kitsune fox ears and all that good stuff. Penelope, I'm gonna stick right next to Camilla, mostly because they're probably on the same caliber of 
vanilliness and aesthetics. So I'm not gonna go too much in depth there. Pirate flan. Now you might think, well, you put flan in fucking waifu tier, so pirate flan must be a goddess tier. And you would be right, but you're not, because here's the thing about pirate flan. Pirate flan is a pirate. You either fuck with being a pirate or you don't fuck with being a pirate. If you fuck with being a pirate, you run the risk of going to jail, going out to sea. You might you might have get seasickness pretty easily. Uh, you have to deal with people and you got to say arg matey and you got to do a whole bunch of tasks. You're stuck on a boat. So you probably don't have a lot of like alone time. Um, so it's, it's going to be one hell of a journey. So you got to be ready for that. But if you don't fuck with it, then then she'll probably be like, okay, well, uh, you can stay here. I'll probably go out to sea and you'll end up being at home. Maybe, I don't know, jerking off to hentai, but your, your damn wife is going to be out at sea doing all the good stuff. It's kind of like, uh, when you're saying goodbye to a relative who is going to the army, basically, um, you won't see them for a very long time. And that's the only drawback major flaw with flan pirate flan of course i checked her aesthetic she's pretty hot honestly i'm not gonna lie um i don't like how there's like a red light near her eye patch it's kind of weird to me politis now i'm gonna be honest i got no clue what politis does i don't know what she what she does for a living but i'm gonna stick her in mid because she's not ugly ravi has to be probably below average honestly I don't really fuck with Ravi. You know, she's a demon, but she's not like crazy. You know, she doesn't really express it. She still has the same bratty personality as uh, Apoc Ravi. And she's not even as cool as Apoc Ravi. So I had to give her below average. I'm gonna just stick Ram and Rem. Let me get Rem real quick. Since they're basically the same character aesthetically, and I don't know too much about them, I want to rate them the same. And I think they're probably going to be above average, mostly because, again, everyone likes Ram and Ram. ReZero is a popular anime, uh, and I don't know anything about it. So I'm just going to go with popular consensus and my own personal judgment, which is not waifu, but above average for sure. Also, they're made so they can probably clean and do some good shit for you. Rin is above average because she basically is a watered down version of Moonlight Rin, you know, Crescent Moon Rin. Obviously they look different, but they function the same. Like Rin is a dancer, Crescent Moon Rin is a dancer, but I think uh, aesthetically and her getup, it's a, it's a little less than Crescent Moon Rin. It's less flaunty. Um, it's definitely two sides of the same coin, but I gotta say Crescent Moon Rin is just out of the ballpark, way better than normal Rin. So that might be Cap. I mean, you could probably put Rin in waifu tier and I'd be okay. But personally, I don't, I don't really like her as much as Crescent Moon Rin. So I got to put her in above average. Now, Rose is a Valkyrie of some sort and is hot because she's got big booba. So because of that, I have to put her in, I had to put her in above average. Like there's nothing wrong with Rose, but she doesn't really offer too much but there's no downside there's no real downside to her now ruel just looks goofy as shit i'm just gonna be honest so i have to stick ruel mid seems okay she has like a weird dot on her nose area and it makes her look like a squirrel like i don't know why i never noticed until you zoomed in on her picture i don't really like her aesthetic but i think plot plot wise she does get carried i really do like kisei uh, a lot does she hold up to Judge Kisei? Hell no. Is she mid? Definitely not. Um, I gotta put Kisei in above average. Uh, she looks nice, aesthetically pleasing. I don't think personality-wise there's nothing wrong with her. Like, she doesn't seem the type of gal to like fucking screw you over. She still has like the same pers persona as Judge Kisei, just in a different body I feel like, and maybe toned down a little bit. So that's why she's in above average. The only thing that's really holding her back from waifu status for me is that she's... I want a little more sauce to her. Just a little more. But other than that, I mean, she's pretty much perfect. Seaside Bologna for me is 100% a waifu. You know, she's basically Bologna, but a lot better. You know, she's in a swimsuit. 
I, I think, I feel like she's a little more playful than Bologna. Bologna, I feel like, would be able to tease you, which you might be into, you might not. But if you are into that, I think she'd be, like, magnificent at it. Yeah, so that's why I gotta put her in waifu status. Maybe not on the same caliber as, like, Araminta, or not Araminta, sorry, as, uh, like, the lion or anything but she definitely deserves to be at least in this tier because she does beat like archdemon mercedes or lilius where they have like a, a slight flaw i think sigrid believe it or not you might disagree is actually mid i like her aesthetic i think she's hot the only issue is that she's a homunculus so she probably doesn't have much human feeling or would have much human feeling toward others um so you're gonna have to work on it, kind of like Celestial Mercedes and Mercedes. The thing about Senya is if you read story or know about this story, you know what happens. But for story reasons, I have to put her in, I wanna say, uh, mid, I had to put her in mid. You're gonna have to work on this girl a lot in order for her to be successful. Assuming that, you know, she makes it out of the dump. Otherwise, if story didn't exist, and if I was just basing it off appeals, she'd probably be above average, if not waifu, because I love her so much. Uh, I like Cirilla. She probably goes on to the same caliber as Dizzy, but slightly less functional. Um, they have similar functions, but I still think Cirilla can hold her own as a waifu. Uh, she's got that succubus kind of vibe, really good, really good assets, and uh, I don't know, she's just great. Um, definitely on the lower end of the of this tier though, I will say. Shadow Rose is probably going to be around where Rose is, mostly because I don't know too much about Shadow Rose, and they look very similar. So one has blue hair, probably has a darker outfit because they're Shadow Rose. Anyway, Shooting Star Acades. Now, Shooting Star Acades, I'm gonna put one tier above Acades, which is mid, because I feel like Yes, Acades, Shooting Star Acades is not visually pleasing to me. I might be able to see the appeal to others. And also, like, she is like a ringmaster looking like, so she's got to have some sort of knowledge on how to have fun and how to entertain people. And I think that's important in a relationship. Shuna, I'd have to rate mid. Um, she's very basic. Again, I don't know too much about that time I got reincarnated as a slime, so I don't know too much about Shuna. But I will say she's got horns. She's wearing a kimono. I think, I think aesthetically, overall, she's pretty solid. The thing that boosts her up from below average is that she has horns because uh, people like horns. Silk is pretty basic. Uh, I'd have to give her the one-up from probably uh, Maya, but I'm still gonna put them on the same tier, mainly because Silk has elf ears and Maya does not. Now Solitaria, I'd have to rate at a above average. I think she's hot. She's like an idol. So she probably knows how, knows how to entertain you pretty well. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with her, like Archdemon or Apoc Ravi. I think if, you, if you're with her, I think you would enjoy it. Very vanilla though. Um, you know, you'll probably be doing a lot of karaoke nights though, to be fair. Sonya is kind of like Inos, IMO, just a slightly more peppered Inos. So I'm gonna put her in below average. Now, Spirit Eye Selene, I originally put her in waifu tier because I thought she's pretty badass, she's cool. But after looking at her, I was like, she's kind of above average. Like, she's not that good. I mean, I like her aesthetic and everything, but I don't know, it's just not like tippy top shape. And I would maybe rate her higher or lower depending on her lore, but since I don't, I gotta leave her an above average. Now, Seaside Saria, this one might shock you. I'm gonna put her in a waifu, and you might think, wow, you put a Saria in fucking mid, but you're gonna put Seaside Saria in fucking waifu? What the hell is this? One, Seaside Saria is hot as shit. I don't, if you think not, then you're crazy. So her aesthetic is fucking through the roof. And I feel like in this, the sort of pose that she's in, I feel like she doesn't seem to talk too much. Like, she doesn't talk. She's very just like quiet and to herself. Normal Asaria is like that too, but after a while, she seems like she would get pissed off and start going off on you. With Seaside Asaria, I feel like she's a little more chill about it. So I gotta stick her in the waifu, just, just because 
It's such a great improvement from normal this area. Like, I don't know what to say. Uh, we don't know anything about Brinus, or I don't, because she's a side character, but since this tier list has Brinus, I want to put her in above average because she kind of reminds me of Zero Suit Samus, but like slightly worse. She's got, she works with technology. So she's, she has some understanding of the world and technology. She could probably help you build an iPhone. I don't know about her personality, but from what I've seen, I think she's a good pickup. Tamarin, waifu. Why is Tamarin a waifu? I think Tamarin's kind of hot. She's an idol, so uh, she sings a lot. That might get annoying, but at least she knows how to have fun during karaoke nights. And she has two sort of appearances. One that makes her look like Shrek, and the other one that's shown in the picture here. And that is something that no one else has in the entire game, as far as I know. Except for maybe, uh, nope, nope, nope. She's just the only one. Just trust me on this one, okay? Person, it, she's just unique and nobody else has what she has. So that's why I got to put her in waifu. Now, Tenebria, the, the fire version, I'd have to say is below average. I don't like her aesthetic. She's not ugly. She's like, eh, I don't know. If, but if I had to put her like, rating in order. I probably put her near the top, so somewhere around here. I don't I don't really know too much about her lore or anything, but I had to put her in below average. Tyria. Tyria and Free Spirit Tyria look the same, so I gotta put it in mid. Verdant Addin, the specialty chains version. I mean they basically look similar. Like look at this. They look similar, so I'm gonna put them right next to each other and below average. Now no this is uh the moonlight version of Tenebria. If we are rating Tenebria based on her skin only, she would be waifu. If we're going based off of this skin originally, probably below average. So combining the two, since most players probably won't be able to get her skin anytime soon, you got to put her in like mid somewhere. Probably in the middle somewhere of mid. I don't think she's unlikable. She definitely is a little dominatrix, kind of like Conquer Lilius, just to a lesser extent. Uh, you can tell by her voice lines. Um, well, Vivian is like, all right. Um, no, I'm just kidding. She's my waifu. You already know where she's going. Goddess tier, bitch. Now, Wanda is just a worse version of all-rounder Wanda because my argument with Wanda was, oh, she has goggles she's got a bow she has some utility with wanda she's less aesthetically pleasing and probably has the same utility if not worse because it's a, a non-specialty change version of her so i gotta put her in below average i had to put chocolate silk in above average why am i putting chocolate silk in above average mainly because chocolate silk again as similar to all around her wanda uh, has that archer utility so she can probably hunt and do things outdoors for you. Let's say if you're going camping and you accidentally forgot to bring food for some odd reason and you're about to die, she could probably save you in a fucking pinch. Uh, she's an above average because, I mean, come on, like, she's hot. Let's, let's just get that one out of the way. Now, this person, I don't know your name. I think it's Ryu Young or something. I have little to no information on you. You do look like Hazel, though but slightly better because you have a little more spice to you. So I want to put you at like at the end of mid. She's, he's got the blue and white hair going on, uh, samurai-esque type vibe. I'm not a hater, but I don't like it. This has to be the easiest above average of my life. A couple things about Yafin is she's basically H Yafin, but worse in the fact that, you know, she's not wearing a swimsuit. But other than that, She's like perfectly similar to Yuffin probably, I mean, Holiday Yuffin probably, you know, personality wise. She seems like she knows how to have fun, all that good stuff. You just don't get her in a swimsuit outfit. So that drops her down the whole tier. Yuna is, it's gonna be waifu status. Why am I putting Yuna in waifu status? I think Yuna bonds very well with people that play this game. If you're a fucking incel and if, or if you're nerdy, I think you'll like Yuna a lot. Uh, cause she's nerdy as well. She could be a little exuberant, you know, she does some embarrassing things. You get panty shots during her S3. Um, so people like to jack off to that or whatever. She's not ugly. Um, she's nothing crazy like Luna, but just from her personality and how she's built alone, carries her a long way. Personally, if I had to rate her, 
um, not considering everything else. I probably put her in like mid, but for the sake of the video and for y'all to try to understand waifus and culture a little more, I had to put her in waifu tier. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this was actually supposed to be a stream, but the stream ended up being not how I wanted it uh, whenever I started editing. So I decided to just make another video and just choose the tier list I made from stream as a reference. Anyway, that's going to be all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know, comment down below if you thought, oh shit, Flan, fucking trash, or something like that. Or maybe if you have a suggestion on what I should do next, go ahead and comment that. Go follow my Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash VulcanDXDLord. Go ahead, join my Discord. Uh, link will be down in the description. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, night, evening, whatever time it is for you. And love you guys and peace. Sticky honey roast, please.